In today's video we're going to be making ourselves a simple web page about Taylor Swift's 1989 album. As you can see here we've got a cool header at the top with a bit of colour in it and a bit of size. We've got some information here about the album. Down a bit further we've got the track listing. We've got a link at the bottom where we can buy the CD from off a website and we've also got a picture on the right hand side here. To finish it off we'll put a little footer at the bottom with the copyright statement in it. So a fairly simple looking web page, but it does look clean and tidy, so I think it is pretty professional. Let's pop over to our accounts now and get started. Uh, we will begin today by making ourselves a Taylor Swift web page folder. Inside of that folder, you need to make another folder called Images, or IMG there for short. Inside that Images folder, you'll have the 1989 album cover, just a picture of it saved. Back outside that images folder, you would have also noticed I've got the blank.html file there. That's all the writing that needs to go into the web page. It's all written up for you. Okay, so just right click on that file now and open it with brackets. Or you could go to the home tab up here and just open it that way with brackets. You'll see here all the text that needs to go into our web page. To start with today, we need to go to line one and put in the doc type tag tells the computer we're making a HTML file or a web page. Okay. Once we've got the HTML doc type tag in, it's time to put the HTML tags in. Don't forget we have the starting tag here that tells us we're starting a HTML document and we've got a closing HTML tag which says we've finished our HTML document. So we need to write our code in between those two tags. Okay. I'm going to go to line three now and press tab. Okay, I'm just indenting my code to show that whatever comes next is going to be inside the HTML tags. And the next tag we always write, it's the head tag. Okay, Inside the head tags we're going to indent one more time to show that we're now putting stuff inside the head tags. And it's going to be the title tag that we write in. And the title for our website is just Taylor Swift-1989. Okay, And then you can close that title tag off. That's all we're going to include in our head section for now, but we will be coming back to this section later on to add a bit of style to our web page. But first of all, we're just going to get the HTML written, which is the basic structure of our page. Okay, so we're going to go outside the head tags now. We're going to go down to line 7, and we're going to write in the body tags. Okay, this is the part of the web page that will be displayed in your web browser. So anything that comes inside the body tags is going to be shown on your web page. Okay, so what we want shown on our web page is all this information at the bottom. So it's time to highlight it and press Control X to cut it out. Go back inside your body tags and paste it in by pressing Control V. Now you want to highlight this information and you want to indent it by highlighting it and pressing Tab needs to be one step inside the body tags just to show that this information will be showing up on our web page. Okay. Don't forget to keep pressing Control S to save your work and also hitting that lightning bolt there to bring up your live preview so you can get a preview of how this web page is looking. At the moment our page still looks pretty rough in the middle here but you can see we've got a title up the top now Taylor Swift 1989. That's what we wrote in the head section just before. Okay, That's our title. But what we do need to really do is fix up this body section and make it start to look pretty good. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, we've got our header right here, Taylor Swift 1989, so I'm going to put some header tags around it. Don't forget to remove, just by pressing Control X, we're going to cut that header closing tag out and put it at the end of that line. So I've got a opening tag, we write in our header, and then we close off that header section. Okay, that's easy, that's done. Coming up next, we've got the main part of our web page, so all the important information. Okay, this is coming below the header. So we're going to put in a tag called article. You usually use this article tag for the main content that appears on your web page. Okay, so the opening article tag, whoops, will start just above Pop Sensation there and just below our header. The closing article tag needs to go down the bottom here below that click here to buy that 1989 CD. Okay, so closing tag, opening tag. I'm going to highlight now the text in between it and just press tab to indent it to show that it comes inside the article tags. 
Okay, the first line of text is just our first paragraph. We don't need to touch that. That's fine where it is. The second paragraph, though, we're going to need to tell the computer we want to make a new paragraph. So we use the P tag for that. Okay, so that opens up a new paragraph. We write our paragraph, and at the end, we close it off with a closing P tag. We're going to do the same for the next paragraph. So write in a P tag. Okay, and cut that closing tag out and move it to the end of that paragraph. So there's our closing P, and there's our opening P, and everything in between is a new paragraph. So I'm going to do one more of those where it says track listing just here. I actually want you to delete track listing and write it again without the capital letters. Okay, so it'll look something like that. New paragraph, write the word track listing, and then close the paragraph off. Okay, it's time to save our work now, so press Control S and have a preview of how it's going. So you can see what our header across the top here, and then we've got one paragraph, two paragraphs, three paragraphs, and there's our fourth paragraph coming in. The next part is the name of all the songs on the album. Okay, what we want to do with that is turn it into a list of bullet points, and we want them to be numbered bullet points. Okay, so the way we do that is we create an ordered list. So after the track listing, I've gone down and I'm going to open up a bracket and write OL inside it, which stands for ordered list. The closing OL tag will come after the last song where it says clean. Okay, just paste it down here so you can see you've got ordered list there and there. Everything inside it, which is the track names, we're going to tab across just to show that they come inside the ordered list tags. Now we're not quite finished this list yet. If I preview that, it's not going to do anything apart from a bit of an an indent just there, it doesn't look any good. What we do need to do to make these bullet points appear is write in the LI tag, which stands for list item. Every time we want a new bullet point to appear, we add a new LI tag at the start of the sentence or that line of text. So it's a copy and paste job now to make list items out of every track on that album. Don't forget at the end of every track we need to copy and paste the closing li tag which will close off that bullet point okay a little bit confusing but you'll get the hang of that pretty quickly I'd say so an ol makes an ordered list and to make the actual bullet points appear you must add the li tags the list item tags okay and you do that for each song on the CD if I save that now you'll see that the numbered bullet points have appeared next to each song and that's our ordered list it's in a specific order it's looking really good Okay, so going down, we've got, after that ordered list, we've got another sentence here that says, whoop, click here to buy the 1989 CD. We're going to turn that into a paragraph of its own. So put the P at the start and the P at the end. We actually want to make this into a hyperlink. So we can click on the click here words, and it will take us off to Taylor Swift webpage. So to do that, we just go after the P, and we write A space href, and we write equals. Then in quotation marks, we write down the website address we need to go to. So put http colon forward slash forward slash, you must always put that in, then write www.taylorswift.com. Then outside those quotation marks, we're going to close off the pointy bracket, and you'll see that this closing A tag appears. We actually need to cut that out and move it after the words click here. Okay, so we've just added in ahref equals, we put in Taylor Swift's website, and close the bracket. Since we want the words click here to be our hyperlink, we move that little a which closes our link off after the word here. Okay, so that will make this part, click here, our hyperlink, and the rest of the sentence should just be normal text, which isn't a hyperlink. If we save that and test it, you can see the words click here now will take us to the Taylor Swift web page. As you hover over, if you look in this bottom left hand corner, you will see the actual website address come up. Okay, so I won't click it now, but if I do click that, it will take me to the Taylor Swift web page. Alright, one last thing I want to add in is below the article section, but still inside the body. Okay, so what I want to add in is a footer. So I'm going to put in the footer, footer tag, and I haven't got this written yet, so I'll write it myself. It's copyright. Now to do the copyright symbol, you have to do the ampersand sign, or the and sign, and write the word copy, and then a semicolon. It will come up in yellow, as you can see. So copyright, 
do the copyright symbol, you write 2016 and then write Taylor Swift. Whoops. Okay, that's our copyright statement in the footer. We save that up now, have a look and you can see we've got our copyright statement. So the basic structure of our page is there now. We've got it set out, it's looking a little bit more decent, but it's definitely got no style to it, it looks quite boring. And this is where our second programming language comes into play. We use CSS to add a bit of colour and a bit of style to our web page to make it look pretty. Okay, HTML is the code that just puts the structure of the website together. CSS is the code that makes it look good. Okay, so that's a bit of style to our page. And where we put this CSS code is back up the top in the head section. So right up near line 3, we've got our head section. I'm going to click after the title here, go down a couple of lines, and as I said before, we're going to add a bit of style to our page. So we put in the style tags. This is where our CSS coding goes. Okay. The first thing I want to style up is my body section. Okay, so everything inside these body tags, which is all of this, we're going to style up first. Okay, so inside these style tags at the top, I'm going to write the word body and open up a curly bracket on the next line. You'll see the closing curly bracket appear as well, that's fine. Now, inside those curly brackets, the first thing I want to change is the font. So I'm going to write font dash family choose the sans serif option and put a semicolon. What that code does is changes our font to sans serif. And if you have a look back at your page now, we've got a different font. Okay. I like the sans serif font because it's known to be an easy uh, to read font on the web and on a computer screen. So it's a good font to choose sans serif. All right. The next thing we want to do is to find the size of our font. I think the size we've got is pretty good, but we're going to write 1 EM anyway. That's the most appropriate size for the screen you're looking at your website on, so you're not going to see any difference when we save it, but 1 EM is the normal size for a font on a website. And I want to change one more thing, the line spacing. And it's known as line height in CSS. Okay, so line height, we're going to set to 1.5 EM. That's basically 1.5 line spacing. And when we save that now, you'll see a bit of extra space coming in between each line of text, which makes it look a little bit cleaner and a bit easier to read. Okay, so kicking on, we style up our body section, so don't forget you close off your curly brace there. And that little bit there has just styled up everything inside the body tags down here. What we're going to style up next is the header section. So if we find the header tags, that's just that one line there that says Taylor Swift 1989. We're going to style up everything inside those header tags. So the way we do that, back up in our style section at the top, we write the word header. We open up a curly brace. And there's a few things we can do here. First one, let's change the font size. Instead of going 1 EM, which is the standard size, let's make it three times the standard size. So we'll make it 3 EM. If we save that, have a look. You can see the fonts come out really big now, three times its usual size. All right, doesn't look good, so let's keep adding to it. Next thing we might do is text align and choose center. That'll just put our text in the center of the page. Another thing we can do is do font weight. And I'm going to write the word bolder. That'll make it a nice, big, thick font. We have a look now, it's in the center of the page because we aligned it in the center and we got that nice thick font. All right, let's keep going. Another thing we can add to it is a bit of space around it so it's not quite as cramped up the top there. So I'm going to put 30 pixels of padding around our document, oh, sorry, around our header. If we have a look at that now, we've got a bit of space and that's not overlapping that text below it now. We want to put a bit of color in there too, so let's add a background color in. I'm going to choose something a bit girly like hot pink. That's actually a color in CSS. The other thing I'll do is just change the color of the text. So we just write color for that, spell it the American way. I'm going to choose antique white. I think that'll contrast well with the hot pink. All right, so let's have a look. There we go, got that hot pink background and that antique white 
colour for our font. That's our header done. It's looking quite good. So let's close it off with a curly brace and we're going to go down another couple of lines. The next thing we're going to style up is the article section. So everything in between the article tags, which is a good chunk of our writing, plus all the track listing here and also the hyperlink, we're going to style that up next. There's not much we have to do to it, but we'll give it a little bit of style. So up at the top again inside the style tags, write the word article. On the next line, open up your curly braces. First thing I want to do is put a little bit of padding around the outside of this middle section. You're barely going to notice it, but I've put in a little bit of padding of five pixels just around the outside of this document. Okay, and that way it doesn't quite hug the edge of the computer screen. Just a little bit of space off the edge of the computer screen. Uh, the other thing I want to do is change the width. I'm going to make it 98% of the page. So it's not quite 100% of the page. Let's have a look at that. There you go. So if it was 100% of the page, it'd come right out to the edge of the page here. But because it's 98%, it only goes close to the edge of the page. The other thing we want to do is just write background colour. I know it's already white, but we're going to tell the computer that we want a white background anyway. Otherwise, we will have some issues further down the track. So we're just going to define the article with a white background. And obviously, it stays white in here. All right, so that's our article section all styled up. There wasn't much we had to do to that. The next part's the footer. So our footer tags are down the bottom here, and it's the copyright statement. So everything inside those footer tags we're going to style up next. So that little bit just there. Okay, so up the top in our style tags again, we're going to come below the article and write the word footer. And open up a curly brace. Now the style we want to add to this. First one, font size. We're going to change it to about three quarters of its usual size by making it 0.75 em. Don't forget that semicolon at the end of the line. After that, we're going to change it into italics by changing the font style to italic. Put the semicolon at the end. The next one, we'll push it over to the center of the page. So text align will be center. Um, what else can we do to this? We'll just save it and have a look first of all. Make sure it's looking all right. Yeah, there we go. So it's in the center. It's a bit smaller and it's in italic. What else have we got? We might put in a background color to match the top. So I chose hot pink for the header section. I'll choose hot pink again for the footer. And finally, I'm going to change the color of the text to antique white again. The same as the top. If we save that now, and if we have a look, there we go, our footer's looking pretty cool now. Nice pink strip at the bottom, bit of text inside it, and a nice colour as well. So this web page is definitely coming together. It's looking a lot nicer than what it was. Okay, next thing I want to style up is this track listing here. Okay, you can see it's got the P brackets around it. So what I could do is up the top here, write P and change the color of that to hot pink. This is going to cause an issue. If I save it, you'll see what I mean. Okay, it changes all the P's or all the paragraphs into hot pink. I just want the track listing there to be hot pink. Okay, so the way we do that the way we get around it is give this paragraph here, the track listing one, a special name. Okay, so I'm going to go inside this P tag and write class equals, and in quotation marks, I'll just come up with a name, so I'll just write the word tracks. Okay, and back up the top in our style, instead of using the P tag, we just write dot tracks. Now, once we've written this dot tracks, we can save it. So control S and pop back over to the preview window and we can see now that just the track listing is in pink. Okay, so we've just formatted with dot tracks. All we've formatted is the paragraph that has that special name, that class name called tracks. Okay, so everything between those two P brackets will change to pink and that's what's happened there. With that track listing, there's a few other things I want to do to it. Okay, the first thing I want to do is change the font weight to be bold. So that'll just make it a little bit thicker. And the other thing I want to do is 
turn it to uppercase letters. So I'm going to do the text transform option here and choose uppercase. Okay, don't forget your semicolon at the end of the line. Give that a save and we can test it. You can see track listing now is all uppercase letters and it's in bold. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I think the last thing that we need to do is put a picture in to fill up a little bit of this empty white space on the right hand side here. Okay, so the way we put a picture in, it's quite simple. We're going to go down back into our body section and go just before the track listing. So you can see that your track listing is here. We actually want to go in the space above that. Okay, so above the track listing, let's do the IMG tag, which is the image tag and write SRC which stands for source. So image source, then we write equals and in quotation marks we look inside our images folder and select the 1989.jpg picture and then close off our quotation marks. So that, well in the bracket sorry, that little bit of code there will insert an image and it just looks through the images folder and it will bring up the 1989 picture. If you hover over it, you'll see that you do get a preview of what that image is going to look like. Okay, so if we save that and test it, we can see we've got a picture sitting in there now. Now, it would be nice to get this picture to float on the right-hand side of the page next to our text instead of having this big awkward white gap down the bottom here. So we're going to have to do a bit of styling on this image. So back up the top inside our style tags again, we're going to go below this dot tracks class and what we're going to write in is the IMG tag. Okay, we'll open up a curly brace and as I said before we're just going to choose the float option and select right. That'll just push it to the right hand side of the page. If we just press Control S and have a preview you can see now it's just floating there by itself on the right hand side of the page filling up a bit of that white space that we had before. Okay, I might just try and uh, nudge it in a little bit from the edge of the page too. I'll give it a bit of padding and see how that looks. So padding, we'll make it about 30 pixels. Save it again. And that's just pushed it in 30 pixels from the edge of the page there. So it's just coming a little bit. I think it looks a little bit nicer. Alrighty, so I think that's that's us done. We've got a nice header at the top. Big letters that are bold. And we've got some writing through the middle here in our uh, article section. Got an ordered list with a track listing. We've got a little hyperlink down the bottom here. Picture on the right, and we've also got our copyright statement at the bottom. So now that everything's done, it is time to test this hyperlink out. So let's click on that link and see if it takes us to the Taylor Swift web page. As you can see here, it is loading, and it says taylorswift.com. So things are looking good. I know she has a pretty big website, so it could take a while to load, but yeah, you can see that's her website now loading up. Since we're going outside of our actual web page, it might be a good idea to open that link in a new tab. So the way we do that is very simple. Just scroll down and find your hyperlink, which is just here. It's the ahref tag. What we want to do is get inside those brackets just after the quotation marks on taylorswift.com. We're going to put a space. We're going to write target equals underscore blank. And what that does is when we click on the link, it just opens up our Taylor Swift web page in a new tab. Okay, if you want to have a quick look at that, I'll click it now, and you can see a new tab opens up. That way, when, once we're finished with the tab there, we can just close it, and we're still on our original web page. Okay, so it's always a good idea to open up a new tab when you're going outside of your own web page. All right, if you're just staying in your own web page, you don't need to open it up in a new tab. That'll do us for this tutorial. Hopefully you've got something looking like this now on your screen.